Hello everyone, welcome back to NR 2003. It's been a while since I've done one of these, so uh, yeah, let's get started. We're here for the Virginia 500 at Martinsville. Um, I'm using the default track because, uh, I'm, oh, well, they're getting started in the background. That is not what we want. Oh, let's uh, rewind this here a little bit. Oh, we'll put it about right here. Alvin Tompkins on pole, and to the outside of him, that is Gavin York with the 29 of Michael Scout just behind them, and the green flag will wave. Oh, it looks like Jack Seacrest in the 24 back there got a pretty dang good start. Can he get to the inside of the 29? Oh, he's going to cause his teammate to be in some issues, but they're three wide off the corner, and uh, Scout is going to tuck in, but it looks like Jack Seacrest is going to have positioning to take that spot away. Oh, but they're three wide yet again. It looks like Dylan Thomas is going to look to the inside of the 29 here. 125 laps of action like this should be a good race. Still three wide. Gavin York's going to keep it to the outside of Michael Scout. Great battle for third here. If the 48 can clear, it will be a DTM 1 2 3. York still keeping it to the outside of the 29 instead of tucking in line, and that might hurt him. I think the 38 of uh, TJ Louder will get to the inside now. And back up front, Alvin Tompkins has got a bit of a lead. <laughs> Almost, I'd say over just yeah, just over a half a second. Um, only four laps in, but we'll see if uh, Jack Seacrest can do anything with. Uh, Alvin Tompkins as this race progresses uh, not a good start for uh, Jonathan Powers he is dead last right now of the 42 people in this race <laughs> go through the field oh one car around that's the two car and that would be Jacob Woodrow caution should be out yep caution is out here uh, I don't believe we've had any more incidents other than that oh I spoke too soon. Trevor Marsh is around. Take a look at what happened here real quick. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, off the corner here. And he gets turned. Oh, and then hit head on too. Some damage to the 82 there. Um, it's Martinsville though. Shouldn't play too big of a factor. Like I said, it is Martinsville. You can do a lot with damage here. Oh, um, but now we will check the two car. I've seen it happen. I've seen the 11 get checked up. Yeah, okay. So they're three wide off the corner. The 11's with his teammate. And now they're almost four wide. And then the 11 just hits the wall. And then two hits him. And then contact sends the 46 and the two round. And uh, that. That's about it. That's enough said. Oh, but it's a race back to the line thing here. And Dylan Thomas still second. Wow. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I mean, it wasn't much, but he definitely got up to second. Whoa, contact in the back there. They stack up really quickly here. Oh, the 94 goes around. Whoops. Wrong button. I done did a D-man. So the 17's on the... Oh, wow. The 17 must have not been happy with the 94 there. Turns him. Or causes him to get turned, at least. Huh. Well. That's interesting. Well, we'll go to the restart. Well, these guys have got to get some things settled out, but once that happens, we'll be able to get restarted. It should be going green this time by Alvin Tompkins is out front here uh, new second place runner as Dylan Thomas beat his teammate uh, Jack Seacrest to the line and the green flag will fly oh but Jack Seacrest did not like the fact that Dylan Thomas challenged him okay Jack Seacrest gonna send it right back to the inside of Dylan Thomas, a little bit of a gentleman's agreement to get that to get that 48 back in line there, so no harm, no foul. 
Uh, but now this lets Jack Seacrest be a lot closer to the 25 of Alvin, and the caution is out. Whoa! Massive stack up here. What happened? I don't even know what began this. Oh, there's stack. Oh, my goodness. All right, well. That might have just created some issues, because now Jack Seacrest, second place runner, has damage. What just happened? Oh, these guys are just pile driving each other in the turn one. When oh, Alvin's, what, what are we doing? Oh, Alvin's got damage. How? Okay, I, I don't know where to start with this. Because this is stupid. I'm going to be honest, I really uh, didn't know this happened when I first recorded this race, so I uh, probably won't be using this form of Martinsville again. Okay, so they're already stacked up here. I think this is on the initial start, too. What the heck? No, this is a lap after the restart, but. What happened? I'm assuming it starts with the 12. Oh, 73 goes around. Now the whole field's stacked up. Caution's out at this point. But people go into turn one. Oh, and some people just get hung together. And it leads to this. Nearly a flip for the 11. Let's take a look at that again. Yeah, just drove under. Uh, and then, okay, I see what happened here. Then the leaders come through. Uh, Jack C. Crest, all of them, they come through. It's a short track, and these guys are racing back to the line, so. They get here, and there's they're checking up. Like, dang, the 48 gets airborne as well. Mm. Crazy incident here. Oh, yeah, look at this one more time. Ton of front runners get damaged. Dang, 38 even hopped a little bit. I mean, literally everyone. Well. Part of it, I guess. And then it happens again the next time around. So. And then up on the curb goes the 29. I was probably going to put him out of race. Tons of chaos, is all I can say. Coming to green. A whole lot of nonsense happened under caution. The one thing we do now, Alvin Tompkins still leads. Oh, 48's up and into the wall. Well, I originally thought that uh, Jack Seacrest might have a decent shot of winning this, but with that damage, I don't know if it's going to... It's not slowing him down much, though, so we'll see. <laughs> that uh, wreck actually did take out a lot of front runners. So, like the 9, he was, uh, wasn't was too far from being up front. Four laps down now. 88 as well. Oh, and we have another yellow. Who spun, dadgummit? Okay, Warner 29, who was a front runner, by the way. The 73 again. Let's see how this happened. Oh, just hooks him. Whoa! That's interesting. Mason Hillborn and the 73 both go up and in, right, go into the inside wall.
Wow. Oh, and the 42 just spun the 12. I believe we have some people pitting here. If the 12 decides not to pit. Okay, interesting. Um, we're going to go back to the green. Here we go. <clears throat> The green flies again. Looks like Jack Seacrest might lay the bumper to his teammate. He does! <clears throat> Isn't able to get there, though. Oh, he tried on that restart. I bet Jack Seacrest is thinking that if he can get ahead of his teammate here, he might be able to go on and win the race. I mean, it's only 25 laps in. Astonishingly. Uh, or astonishingly, whatever. Uh... So, we're just really getting into this race a bit, and, well, there's already been a ton of carnage and a lot of cards out. So, I said it should be a good race. Um, I'm probably going to stand corrected. I won't be using this Martinsville for season two. I'll put it like that. It's the default Martinsville, so yeah. Marty's in kind of a <coughs> track, anyways. But it'll be fixed. Oh, the oh, lap car's coming out right in front of the leader. Is it gonna? It's gonna cause the leader to go to the high side. This could be a great opportunity for Jack. Oh, the 25's into the wall. Oh wow, the lap car is gonna cost Alvin the lead. <clears throat> Can he get the run on his teammate from the outside? <clears throat> he does not, but he's there on his teammate. Oh, I just seen third place get turned. We're going to watch this battle back to the line because we know who wrecked. Uh, Jack Seacrest led a one lap right there. And isn't able to hold on to... Actually, he may not even let a lap. I don't know. I believe he did. And Alvin Tompkins wins the race back to the line. Well, clearly, uh, if uh, Jack C. Chris's theory was that if he uh, he did lead a lap, but uh, it was that if he got the lead, he would be able to hang on to it. That was clearly not the case, as I believe teammates collided here. Off the corner, uh, yeah, Cribs looking to the inside of Gavin York and just isn't there. And he turned. I mean, Cribs or York's car has a ton of damage already. But now it's even worse. So, yeah. Don't even know how that thing's still driving. Real honest. Don't understand it. But. Oh, I hear contact up ahead. Well. What has happened now, then? Oh boy. Oh. And Jack Seacrest gave him a little bump there. <laughs> it happens. Coming back to the green flag here. <laughs> Gavin York is no longer in this mix. He's now at the back of the pack. Oh, and we've had a wreck. Is the yellow out? Yes, it is. <laughs> Let's see how this happened. Restart, they all get super... St oh, the three gets walled, and then the two just gets set to real. Well, that's about the most realistic wreck I've seen so far. I don't know what the heck happened to the three, though. Oh, shit.
Oh, stack up and he wow, turned into the outside wall there. Hey, gasses it back up. Only loses a few spots, so not too bad, I don't guess. As long as you don't have to pit for repairs. Uh, now let's see how the uh, oh they're stacking up here. This could be bad. In fact, there probably will be something that comes out of that. I feel like oh well. Many people race back to the line. Oh boy. Okay, good job, guys. You pulled to the inside. Oh no. I really thought that was going to be bad there for a minute. I don't know what's going on. Nobody heard that. Oh, shit. Oh, well, green flag's back out. We'll go to back to before the restart, because that's shitty on me if I don't. <clears throat> Apparently the 20 past 24. don't know how that happened. Green flag's back out in the air, though. Oh, well, Jack Seacrest didn't like it anyway. He's going to take the spot back. Well, <clears throat> this restart wasn't quite as good as some of Jack Seacrest's previous uh, restarts. So we'll see how he's able to advance here. As Alvin Tompkins is setting. Setting the pace here today. Doesn't have too much damage from the BS caution stack ups that for some reason happened. But he is doing a good job for sure. Managing the race the best that I've seen anyone do uh, ever in this series because no one, we've never raced here at Martinsville. So yeah, he's doing the best. <laughs> Doesn't look like Jack's able to catch him any either. Uh, good old Fade back there in P2. Jack Seacrest, Fade, same person. So if you hear him by that name, you know who it is. Logan Cribb back there in the third position. Taylor Jarrell having a good run here today in that fourth position. And fifth goes to Brandon Wilson, someone we've not really seen up front a lot, but doing a great job here today. Tompkins managing a five to six tenth of a second lead here. He's able to do a really good job at uh, managing position. And Alvin won earlier this year at Phoenix, so he's got a win already. If I'm not mistaken, it's been a while since I recorded to my uh, dumbass self, don't remember. Great job, owner. Um, yeah, I'm doing a fantastic job as the owner of this stuff. Um, I believe Jack Seacrest has a win at Auto Club, and I think Dylan Thacker won the Daytona 500. And Dylan Thomas won at Vegas, I believe. I think Dylan Thomas has two wins, actually. Um... But either way, oh, and I guess if you want to include Alvin's LCQ win from the Clash, then there's that too. Uh, the only one of their team that I think hasn't won a race. Would, oh, I get—I don't think Trevor Graham's won a race yet either. They because uh, oh, I forgot six car teams. Ha! Big brain, big brain yet again. Um. So yeah, there's that. 
Trevor Graham technically won a heat for the Clash as well. He, well not technically, he did win one of the heats. So there's that, I guess. But uh, I don't think Al or uh, Aston Martin, excuse me, I don't think he's won anything yet. Yet. It's DTM, he's bound to win something eventually. And Dylan Thacker also won heat one of the Clash. But when it comes to the Clash, the P3 guy, Logan Cribb, ended up coming out on top. And Logan Cribb won the Richmond Xfinity race. That happened. I'm trying to see what I do remember. And then he was doing really good at um, Bristol, and they had a ton of incidents. It led to a wacky winner, which I don't remember the winner, but I remember the incidents. That's pretty bad, isn't it? Oh, well. Let me see here. Oh, and I'm pretty sure uh, Dylan Thacker won a door race as well, so. Um, this time, in the next season two, we'll do, end up doing qualifying for the Daytona 500, so I'll simulate that. Whoever, whoever qualifies on pole will start there based off time. So, just kind of like real life. Basically the exact same as real life, except if they wreck in the duel, it doesn't matter. Like, because I can't, the AI obviously don't know to lay back. So, um, if they wreck in the duel, it don't count against them. If you win, if you're on the front row for the 500, you will be on the front row. And then the duel winners will start third and fourth. Like they would in real life. So, unless it's obviously the pole winner that wins the duel. So, then it would just be the second place in the duel who starts third or fourth. So, yeah. Coming up on halfway here. Oh, we actually are at halfway. As, uh, Alvin Tompkins is laying down a lot of these uh, slower cars now. Putting many people a lap down. Yeah, Dylan Thacker was indeed the winner of the Daytona 500. I did remember that correctly. I have to go through and check some of my uh, <clears throat> YouTube things on my phone to know because I, at least I put that in the description. Oh, wow. Uh, Gavin York going a lot down. I've seen him running in the top five earlier in this race. A bummer for him. He to get spun by his teammate. Obviously, probably nothing intentional between teammates. Whoa! Tries to block the leader, but he's going to get shoved up the track. And Alvin's going to put him a lap down. Hmm. It must be uh, disappointing for that 18 car to be going a lap down. Here, at Martinsville, one of his favorite tracks. It's just rather unfortunate. I was correct, Jack Seacrest. Uh, I don't know if I said it actually. Jack Seacrest did win Auto Club. And actually has cut the lead uh, of Tompkins, or did cut the lead. Now it's back up to eight tenths of a second. It was down to almost seven tenths, but 
or just under seven tenths actually. Um, <clears throat> but now it's back above and to eight tenths. So we'll see where he's at. Excuse me. After this lap. Oh, we have problems. We have a wreck. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we have a flip at Martinsville. What? What the hell? Have you ever? I mean, oh, the two car was involved again. So three wide. They they get hooked together, and the two just driving into the inside wall. Eventually, they spin right into the path of the twelve, hits him over, and the seventy three becomes involved. And up and over goes that thirteen car. Huh. Toby Broom on his lid at Martinsville, of all places. We continue the flip streak. I think we've had a flip pretty much everywhere. Wow. Alrighty then. Well, that's a moment. Oh, leaders are pitting. We'll keep it here for that. The other, uh, Jack C. Chris, the guy who is currently running in the second spot, uh, did indeed win Auto Club. So, <clears throat> correct there. Um, and then, yes, Dylan Thomas did win Las Vegas. And then Dylan Thomas, I believe, also won the next race at Sonoma. Yes, he did. So, Sonoma goes to Dylan Thomas as well. So, and DCM started off the season practically undefeated. <sighs> I mean, they dominated the early half of the season. Um, or the early <clears throat> race of the season as Alva Tompkins wins the race off pit road. I think Atlanta would have been the first race with a non-DTM winner, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. TJ Louder won uh, Atlanta. So I guess if this is your first race watching this series and you're just hearing me talk about who's won the past races you're like what the hell man I could have went back and watched those <laughs> whoops well I mean to be fair it's your fault for not watching one of the old ones before this one but I'm not complaining about you watching so by all means stay and watch <clears throat> excuse me dang I'm throat's uh, all stuffed up Wilson Hunt ended up winning Richmond, for those of you wondering. Oh, okay, that was weird. What's going on? Okay, so some people did... These people are laps down. But we're focusing on the leader. The leader of the line. not Maybe not the actual leader of the race. Yeah, there's one of the DTM cars right there, the 5. Unfortunate to see him back here. <clears throat> Good restart for him, though. Yeah, so we've got battles go. Oh, we've got a caution too. Where's it at? Where's the? Okay, I don't know what the yellow's for, so <clears throat> gonna have to go back. Oh, it looked like it was the seventy. That would make sense. We got Wilson Hunt won Richmond, so there's another one. Oh, stack up on the restart, sends him head on to the inside wall. Not too much damage, it don't look like, so. Basic Martinsville accident, pretty much, from what I can tell. Oh boy. Oh, 
All these guys should be safe. Oh no. Oh no. What are we doing? Okay, we're good, I believe. Going green. So. Said Green's back out, and Jack Seacrest having to battle the 20. Four positions, we have a caution. For the 30. Ooh, pretty hard damage here, it looks like. Oh, wow. Dude, it's the first time I've seen a wreck like this. Three wide on... I think the 30, the 30 just misses the bottom and causes others to get quite a bit of damage here too. Oh yeah, these guys aren't going to be able to stop, and yeah, they just get piled into it. Oof. 30 with a ton of damage though. Oh, the, wait, wait, is that the 48? Yeah, the 48 with some more damage now. <sighs> Rough day for these guys. Alvin Tompkins back out front here, and they're stacking it up off two. Like geniuses. This game's still way ahead of its time. We can't complain too much. Going green this time, Mike. What the heck? I looked down for a second. I heard... Many, many cars are lap down. There's only 13 people in the lead lap. The 48 is the last of them. At least we made it more than a lap before caution. And now, the battle for um, second and whatnot has changed a lot. As uh, Jack Seacrest has fallen way back now. Not way back, but well, furthest back he's been all day. And he's battling Andrew Davis for the fourth position right now. As Brandon Wilson looks to take uh, second from the 20. Oh, he may have bumped him there. Oh, he, he still might still be bumping him. Uh, Anyway, we're going to take away the second position from Logan Cribb. Logan Cribb, who is a great short track racer, by the way. Um, done really well at Richmond and Cup. Ended up third, I believe. And uh, won the Xfinity race there, so it's a really good short track racer. Uh, got a lot of damage on that car from all the stack-ups we've had today, though. We'll keep an eye on this to see if uh, that battle develops anymore. Keep an eye on the one behind it as well. If we talk if we continue to talk about winners moving on to Bristol, I believe Jack Seacrest was able to able to win that for a second win of the season. I think he was able to get that one. Yes, so Jack Seacrest won the second Bristol race as he looks to battle with Andrew Davis oh man we have a yellow what's this one for oh man the 48 cents box I don't know what that's about okay I don't know what the yellow is for literally no. okay the yellow's not even out yet so we'll watch the best way to check this when you don't know what a yellow is for is go to the pace car and then wait 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 yellow okay oh okay with the 18 no 
still good. It must have been the 30 and the, and the 2. Oh no, the 99. Okay. 99 got turned going into the corner. Oh, by his good friend Jackson Kohler. Oh no. The Kohler turns the 99 into the outside wall, and we're under caution again. We're going to have to see if Jack Seacrest can make up some of his spots that he's lost. Okay, green flag, back out in the air here. Oh, Logan Krupp with a good restart. Gonna go to the inside here. Takes the lead. Wow, unbelievable. That's all it took. Oh, and a caution's out. Jack Seacrest might try to get back to the inside here. Uh, what's the yellow for? Was it for Jake and Sensing? He's here in the back. Oh, I don't think it was for him, but he was definitely involved. I saw the two? I want to say. Oh, nope. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. I don't know what happened to the 31 to start that, so I'm going to go to check him. Uh, let's see. Okay. On the restart, 31 gets turned. Probably has some sort of suspension damage. So now, very bottom of the track, trying to get stopped away from just nowhere to go, and then uh, the two gets involved, and yeah, let's see everything that happens with that. So that puts us back under caution, but with a new leader back under caution. So take a look at this from one more. I want to take a look at this from the two, just so you get the whole view of it. I don't know if I ever showed the whole view, so just to be safe, I clicked the wrong number. Damn it. Two hits the back of that, and the 18 just spins the two around, and then there's nowhere for these guys to go. So they get involved. And the 14 got quite, pretty, honestly, pretty bad damage on the nose there, so. We'll go back to the 25 real quick. And see how he handles this next restart. We're getting down to it here, so. Not going to be much time left. There's 25 laps to go. I believe we should be coming green here. Nope, not yet. We're good now, I believe. Coming to the green flag. Yep. Pace car is going to pull down, and the, the 25 car is now in the worst position he's been all day. We're going to have to see if he can recover in just 20 laps to get the win. Yeah, or are the, are the uh, two best friends up front going to be able to stop uh, some of DTM's domination, but the 25's going to nudge the 16 into turn one. And he's to the inside, has the position into the corner. Two teammates in the form of the BW Racing Cars up front here as well with the 16 and the 17. But the 25 is clear of the 16. <laughs> we had a long green frag, uh, uh, gr green flag stretch in this race. Not a green frag. Um, and well, I can't. There's nothing much to say about that 25. He is fast. He is catching the 20, hands down. I don't think this 20 is gonna be able to hang on, but we have a yellow. What is this one for? I'm going to say it's something to do with the 42. Trevor Marsh, who's also had a rough day. And I would probably be correct. Off the corner, Levin and Drew Teague gets him in the bumper and turns him around. Caution comes out. Man, Logan Crib might be able to hang on here. We could get lucky and be able to do this. That would be something else, to say the least. 
Alba Tompkins dominates the day and gets beat by Logan Kribbis. Oh, man. Wow. Look at that. The, the 25 does not get a good restart. And the, oh, I thought the 17 was going to get him. It doesn't seem like that's going to happen, though. Oh, I don't know. Off the corner. 17 peeking to the inside. Cannot quite get there. I have to see if a caution is to come out. Uh, oh, but that 16's wide. Here comes the 25. Hey, even with everything that's happened, it still end up might be. It still might end up being a good finish. 17 though, looking to the inside of the 25, trying to get DTM out of the top five completely. They've been, they've been knocked back a ton. Alvin's the only one left. These cars have been, these guys have been saving their cars for the end. Alvin may have used up his stuff. I don't know if there is honestly going to be enough time for Alvin to get back up there. Oh, but the 16 had a bad corner there. Can the 25 get to the inside? It looks to be setting him up. <sighs> Got right on his bumper right there. Will he nudge him? Not yet. 16 is able to get away a little bit right there. If if you're Logan Crib, you got to be nervous. You're praying that your best friend in the form of Brandon Wilson can hold off Alvin Tompkins. And he... Wow, that, that was interesting. I mean, if we have a caution here, that's going to end the race. So... Alvin's got to hurry. I mean, he's only got a few lines. I don't think he's going to be able to get there. Alvin has, I mean, straight dominated this race, but Logan Cribb is now out front. And he's and now uh, Alvin's losing ground to the 16. Logan Cribb looks like he might be able to hang on. He's just got to make it around a few more laps here. Uh, Taylor Gerald's made his way up into the top five and fourth. Uh, Jack Seacrest is going to look to get his way back into the top five. If he can get around the 17 here. Off turn four. Crib extending his gap. Maybe not. He lost a little bit of time, but not enough to be relevant. Oh, Jake and Tinsing comes back out and goes back. I think these guys are running laps in the pit lane just to finish the race. Two to go here. Logan Cribb looking to take another short track win. I, I mentioned how he was a great short track racer. He's just proving us right here. White flag is in the air for Logan Cribb. Going to be a heartbreaker for Alvin. Good run for the 16. I mentioned how he had not been doing too great. But it's going to be a jubilation for the driver of the 20. Off or through 3 and 4 for the final time. And off 4. Logan Cribb is going to win Martinsville. Wow. A Martinsville hot dog to the winner of this race. He is going to be munching down on one of those for sure. As Logan Cribb wins Martinsville. I hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next one. Peace out.